Hello everyone. Today I'm going to do a dream interpretation of Dana's recent dream, Keep Your Eyes on the Prize. I'm very excited to share it. So let's get started. Uh, but I want to share a dream that I have between June 19th and July 15th. It's called Keep Your Eyes on the Prize Dream. All right. This dream began with me standing on a very quiet corner in a large city with a jumbotron type monitor. And they might not use the word jumbotron anymore, but that's what I think of. So think Times Square in New York. Uh, the monitor was streaming the news and the latest stock numbers on the side of a downtown, the downtown buildings. Uh, it was very early in the morning. The sun was up. The <clears throat> sun was out. Uh, and there were a few people out walking, but they were all holding umbrellas. And even though it was, it was a full sunny day, uh, nice weather, everybody had an umbrella out. When a person has an umbrella open on a sunny day, it's because they're hiding themselves from the light. The Bible mentions people who walk in darkness. I'll be reading a passage from my interpretation of the Bible called Sword of the Spirit. It's in 1st Yohanan, 1st John. Therefore, this is the message that we have heard from him and declare to you that Elohim, God, is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him, yet walk in darkness, we lie and have no truth. But if we walk in the light, like he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Yehushua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. And so, these people who are walking in the shadow of their umbrella and are hiding from the light are not living in truth. Now, just behind me was a city newspaper stand. When I say city newspaper stand, think New York City, think Chicago. Uh, the wooden doors that open, the newspapers, the magazines in racks. Uh, and so they had this newspaper stand, magazines, and sundries. They were selling candy and cigarettes and things like that, you know, gum and, and mints and, and, and all those magazines and newspapers. And the owner walked out toward the edge of the road, and he stood beside me, because that's where I was standing on the, by the road, just watching. And he stood beside me. He was also carrying an umbrella. And it was opened as if it was raining. So he has the umbrella beside him. It's early morning. He's standing beside me on the edge of the road. And he said, can you believe how bad the world is getting and how little government is doing to fix it? And I simply said, looked at him and said, my faith is in the Lord. Just very normally, just very casually, no emphasis, just my faith is in the Lord. The newspaper man is trying to bait Dana into ridiculing the government. There are several passages in the New and Old Testament that warns against speaking ill against your rulers. In the book of Acts, even Paul mentions this after he accidentally insulted the high priest by saying, Brethren, I did not know that he is the high priest. For it is written, You shall not speak evil of the ruler of your people. And he kind of got in front of me. And he held the, held the umbrella like under his neck and he grabbed my shoulders by both hands. And he said, keep your eyes on what we tell you, no matter how bad it gets. And then he said, and ask your Lord for better weather then because we're tired of the rain. And he peeked out from under the umbrella and looked up into the sky, took it back, okay? And my first thought was, it's not raining. Why well, you got the umbrella? And he says, you know, they're tired of the rain. The reason why the man thinks that there is a storm is because he is hiding from the light and living in darkness. When a person lives in darkness, they are in jeopardy of being judged by the Almighty. His judgment is oftentimes symbolized as a storm in dreams. We see this in Dana's Wall Street barter dream, which I interpreted a couple of years ago. If you would like to watch it, you can find a link in the description box below. The reason why Dana doesn't see or feel the rain is because he is living in the light and isn't living under the judgment of the Almighty. It's as if he is living in a different reality. At that moment, a box truck came around the corner and the guy ran over about 10 feet from me and about just a couple feet from the edge of the road, about two feet from the edge of the road, to get it, but there was, he stood right beside this big puddle, 
this big, look, very, very wet puddle. And as the truck was moving around the corner, a side door opened, and a guy was standing there with a huge bundle that to me looked like a square hay bale at first. And if you've ever, if you grew up in the Midwest, you know what a square hay bale work looks like. And I moved plenty from my grandfather as a kid, okay? And he threw it in the air with great strength as the truck is moving. And it, it seemed like he was struggling to get it there, but he threw it to the curb. And it landed right in the middle of that puddle. And I realized then that this was a bundled stack of newspapers like they used to throw on the, on the, on the corner and the, and the newspaper guys would get it and put it in their stands, okay? And it landed in that, in that big puddle and, the, and it splashed the guy that was standing there in this red sub, it looked like blood. So the, the, the square hay bale of, of newspapers lands in this big puddle and it just throws this red covered substance everywhere. Now my shirt, and my pants had been covered in this red substance that the papers had landed in. And I took out a handkerchief. Now look, folks, I never have used a handkerchief in my life, okay? So that, that stood out to me, but I took this handkerchief out and I cleaned myself off. I even went over to this cement-based water fountain and I got, this, I got the handkerchief wet, and I'm wiping off my shirt. I'm leaving wet spots on me, but I'm wiping off this red substance that looks like blood. I'm, just, I'm wiping it off, okay? Because I felt I had to get it off quickly. That's what I felt. I've got to get this stuff off me quickly before it stains. There is a metaphysical explanation for this whole scene about the red substance and the concrete fountain that I will explain later. But for now, let's stick to the biblical explanation of the red substance that looks like blood. In Yehazikal, or Ezekiel, it says, for I will send pestilence into her, and blood into her streets, and the wounded will be judged by the sword in the midst of her from every side. Then they will know that I am Yehua. You might have noticed that I didn't say, then they will know that I am the Lord, like most Bibles. The reason is because in my interpretation of the Bible, Sword of the Spirit, I chose to include the sacred name of the Almighty, and not cover it up with a title. After all, Yehua doesn't even mean the Lord. It means He exists. And so this passage is saying that by His judgments, people will realize that He exists. And even the unbelieving newspaper man has some sense about him, at least enough to know that the judgment that he is feeling is coming from something that exists. The blood in the streets represents sin. And the bell of newspapers is drenched in reports of it, and God's judgments. If you watch the news and hear about a hurricane, or a massive earthquake, or famine, or even war, guess what? You are reading about the judgments of God as he deals with sin. The danger of reading and watching news that is made by people who walk in darkness is that you open yourself up to their deceit and can get caught up in their slander if you are not careful. This is why Dana didn't take the bait and talk bad about our government, and it is why he quickly washed himself off when the red substance splashed on him. And the newsstand guy walked into the puddle just walked into it so it was deep it was that deep and that big walked in the puddle grabbed the bale and he headed for the newsstand and all the way to the newsstand back about 20 feet he's dripping this red substance like a trail okay and when he gets back he drops this this big bundle of papers real heavy on the ground he just throws it down violently and all this all the the wet stuff that's on it splashes onto his newspapers his newsstand it's just all over the place okay he was dripping that red substance all the way to the stand from where he dropped the papers. And, and now it's covered his existing papers and magazines on the shelves, and they're all covered in this red stuff. So I walked over and asked if he knew what the red stuff was on the papers, and now his supply of paper goods. And he looked at me like I was crazy, and he said, what red stuff? And I pointed to the papers and the magazines, and he said, sir, are you okay? Or, or do you need some medical attention? And I said, the puddle the newspapers landed in splashed a red substance all over me and all over you. 
And he stepped back and he looked around and he said, I, I, I don't see anything when you just read. He looks at me, he's checking the, I, I explained that I cleaned it off, but I did show him the handkerchief that was now all splotchy red covered with what was, had been on me. And he pointed a finger at me, just like this, just kind of look at me, like, like he was looking down the barrel of, of his finger. And he said, head on down the road or else you're gonna start scaring my customers away. People who live and breathe gossip and slander should be afraid because if they realized that they are at risk of being judged by the gossip and slander that they allow into their lives, then the news business would go bankrupt. The shallow state is my place statement that is written in the red substance is linked to the metaphysical interpretation of this dream that I will explain later. But for now, Let's just say that this man is very egotistical. He doesn't have a problem pointing his finger like a gun because he doesn't care if his words hurt. What do you think happens in a society that doesn't care about other people's feelings? It becomes a spiritual bloodbath. Well, by this time, I see that people are walking by with umbrellas and a few are picking up the paper goods and leaving money in a jar. And that jar is marked the declared truth. So it says the declared truth. And all these people are also covered in the red substance. And they were also all oblivious to that. The newspaper guy approached me again to ask how I was. And I, I noticed a button that he was wearing on his shirt and it said, if we don't say it, it ain't true. And I asked him what that meant and he shrugged and he said, if you can't figure it out, you're worse off than I thought. And then I then saw that the back of his shirt had a message that was spelled out in the splash marks of that red substance. And it, sh and it said this, shallow state is my place. Shallow state is my place. And then suddenly there was gunfire and a car going down the road behind me that was shooting into the crowd and nobody moved any faster. Nobody even looked at it. It was like, basically, if, if, just imagine just driving down the road, shooting on the sidewalk and nobody notices, nobody cares, nobody's worried or concerned. Nobody moved faster, nobody cared and nobody looked. And there was a young guy on the ground close to me who was ble bleeding profusely. And I ran over to him and I told him to lay still as he'd been shot. And I went to grab my phone, but he said he was fine and would be late for a meeting. So he tries getting up, even though his leg was not working. And the guy's covered in blood. He's got several bullet wounds in him. And he just doesn't seem, he doesn't even feel like, it doesn't seem like he even knows he's been shot. And I tried to hold him down when another shot rang out. And he took, this, he took a round right in his chest. And I said, lay down, lay down, and I, I'll help you. But he just kept trying to get up. And, and finally, his body starts to get real slow and weak, and he finally dies right there while he's trying to get up. I laid him down, I looked around when I noticed that nobody was taking cover. And we live in a country today, if there's gunshots, everybody turns their head, ducks down, looks for a way to go. Nobody was moving in this dream. Even the newspaper guy, I saw he'd been shot and he was limping around the stand. He was applying pressure to a gunshot wound in his gut area, but he did not, he wasn't panicking, he wasn't saying, hey, help me, he was just going about his life with no concern for the fact he'd been shot in the gut, which is not a good place to be shot. And there were others on the ground dead, but most of the people were just walking by and paying no attention to the hurt ones. And all the people walking by still had, they still had umbrellas out, but nobody was running or, or hiding. And I began to pray in tongues. Now folks, I'm Pentecostal and I pray in tongues. I've already prayed in tongues today, but in the, in the dream, I began to pray out loud in tongues. And I could just, I was watching people die. I was watching people, ble I was watching nobody concerned about what was happening. And I, it was heartfelt. I was sobbing. I was weeping. I could feel the loss. It was a very empathetic dream, but nobody seemed to be taking anything seriously at all. They were walking by the dead people. They took no cover from the gunman. And the Jumbotron started a countdown. And the bottom of that screen showed the stock market was tanking quickly. And on the screen, there was a picture of the bulls on Wall Street and a video of people nonchalantly breaking windows, I mean, with no concern, uh, just, just tapping on the windows, breaking them, throwing chairs, no emotion, no looks on their faces. They were breaking windows in tall buildings and then jumping out of those tall buildings. And there were no screams or cries, no yell. It was like there was no energy from these people at all. No energy from these people at all? I want you to pay attention to this 
because it's part of the metaphysical interpretation that I will share later. No screams requires a cries of anguish. Others around them paid no attention as if it was, it was not real or a joke. And then a news anchor also who was covered in the red substance from like, she was like in a newsroom, not out in the street, in a newsroom. She was covered in that red substance. She was sharing some, some video footage of things happening around the area, people being shot, people jumping out of windows and all this. But as she, as she spoke, she spoke in very slow monotone. I'm going to just imitate what she did. She said this. She said, yes, people are dying, but don't worry and don't hurry because we know it's going to be all right. Trust us because we know. She literally said, yes, people are dying, but don't worry and don't hurry because we know it's going to be all right. Trust us because we know. And with that, she gave this big thumbs up. And then she winked so hard, it was almost like she was going to be injured, like one of those. I mean, she went all out to the point where even in the dream, I kind of like pulled myself back from the screen thinking, this is ludicrous. But she, she, she hinted, she winked so hard, it looked like she might be injured because she was doing it so graphically. This low energy woman's winking eye says a lot about her. In the Bible, it says, he winks his eye to plot schemes. Therefore, we know that we should not trust her. And then I began looking around at people covered in the red substance, and they were everywhere. So all of a sudden, the, the crowd around me on the street in this big, this big city town, they're everywhere. But nobody seemed to actually see the chaos. There were people laying down. There were people jumping out of windows. Uh, but you did not hear yelling or screaming or crying. People were just going through the motions. They seemed to purposely ignore it. And then a man walked up to me and asked if I was all right. And I turned to see it was the man that I always see. And he said to me, I didn't say anything. I just turned to him to look because I'm watching. And he says, I see it all and I know it all. But many in the church see as much as these that you see in the streets. Too many in the body see nothing and they see that on purpose. I say to you to keep your eyes on the prize and be consistent in your discipline. He said they need to purchase salve for their eyes so they can see. And once seeing, get busy serving me in public. And that's exactly how I said, get busy serving me in public. The blind are leading the blind to the end of the ditch and I cannot help them there. Though I want to see with my see with my eyes as that is all that needs to be seen and refuse to see what they want you to see. He then walked away. Dana entitled his dream. Keep your eyes on the prize. I find it interesting that the Jesus character in this dream used a form of the word see 12 times in his closing statement. And so to me, having our spiritual eyes opened is the prize that we should all aim for. This dream can be interpreted several different ways based on how sharp your eyes are. Those who can only see on the surface quickly recognize that this dream is warning about the fake news in the mainstream media. Those with some biblical knowledge can see that there are connections to biblical prophecy. But those with sharper vision can see the hidden metaphysical message, and they clearly recognize that this dream is encouraging people to open their mind's eye. I wasn't sure if I ought to share the metaphysical message or not, and so I took it to prayer and was given a confirmation dream. I will be posting my confirmation dream in a couple of days, so be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss it. Why do you suppose Pastor Dana Coverstone asked the newspaper guy what the red substance was? He asked because what I'm about to teach you isn't something that is taught in Sunday school. Metaphysics is a philosophical discipline concerned with exploring the basic principles that govern the nature of reality. Metaphysics explores abstract concepts to gain a deeper understanding of the world with a goal of revealing truth that is not easily seen in everyday life. Even though the newspaper man could not see the red substance, the red substance had no problem identifying itself on the back of his t-shirt when it wrote, Shallow state is my place. 
Why do you suppose that the message was on the back of his shirt and not the front? Again, this is a clue that helps us identify the red substance and where its shallow place is located. A person's back or spine has several energy centers that help identify their spiritual well-being. Think of a person's brain, spinal cord, and cerebral spinal fluid as their own personal thermometer. Only, instead of measuring their temperature, the central nervous system is a tool that helps measure the energy level that their spiritual awareness or consciousness resonates at. The different energy centers are identified by the different colors of the rainbow. People who are not spiritually enlightened and are very egotistical resonate at a low frequency, which is identified by the color red. The red energy center is located at the base of the spine. This is why the people who were covered in the red substance had low energy, at least when it comes to ranking their consciousness. In the physical realm, these people tend to be more passionate and energized. They don't have control of their emotions. Like the newspaper man, they're easily triggered. If we compare the spine to a deep well, then the shallow place would be at the bottom of the well, our tailbone. An empty well is a deep pit. This is why Jesus said in his closing statement that he cannot help people who are in the pit. A person's frequency increases as they become less self-centered and start becoming more considerate of others. This is why the Bible tells us to love our neighbors as ourselves. In the real world, Dana does allow the news to play with his emotions. This truth manifested in his dream by him getting splashed with the red substance. In the dream, Dana quickly went to a fountain and washed it off before it stained. The cerebrospinal fluid is the living waters within our body. A fountain is elevated water. A person's frequency increases as they become less self-centered and start becoming more considerate of others. Dana is able to wash off the red substance with the fountain and elevate his consciousness to a higher level because he shows compassion for others. Why do you suppose that the big TV monitor on the building showed bulls while the stock market plummeted? In the Bible, our Savior loved to teach with parables that only those with eyes to see could see. The interpretation of this goes very, very deep. So let me put it as simple as possible. We were made in the image of Yehua, he who exists. The first letter of the Paleo-Hebrew alphabet, which represents the Almighty, is the pictograph of an ox head. No, I'm not saying that God is an ox. I'm saying that the strength of an ox is a representation of God in ancient times. Because we are created in the image of the great I Am, Abba allowed this parable to be in Dina's dream so that we recognize who we truly are children of he who exists, which is why the lowest level of consciousness and the first step of our spiritual awakening is recognizing our own existence. The building with its many levels is a representation of our spinal column with all its vertebra. The large TV monitor was located near the bottom of the building, which can be compared to the lowest energy center of our spine. When the monitor showed a picture of bulls and a plummeting market, it was talking about people's consciousness falling back down into lower frequencies. That's why Dana saw people falling from the windows. They were the bulls. So be careful what you eat. If you are feeling hungry, I do have a healthy portion of the Word of God available on my YouTube channel. And if you're wanting something fresh, I also have a book that I wrote called God's Master Plan for the Masses. In Dana's dream, Jesus said, Buy salve for your eyes so that you may see. These instructions originate from the book of Revelation when Jesus addressed the seventh church. 
The word revelation means to reveal or to see what has been hidden. I've heard people mention this passage before, but I've never heard anyone explain what the eye salve is. There is a substance within the cerebral spinal fluid that flows up and down the spine. It takes a lot of discipline, but if a person is able to assist this substance to reach the pineal gland, that person's spiritual life will become more real than their physical world. In Dana's dream, Jesus says, See with my eyes, as it is all that needs to be seen. Also, in the beginning of his closing statement, he said, I see everything, and I know everything. If you see with his eyes, and are able to see everything, then that means that you too can be all-seeing. These are the all-seeing eyes of Ra and Horus. If we separate the two hemispheres of the human brain, we can find them there. And so, every person on the planet has the potential of seeing through the eyes of God. But the only way that they're going to open for you is if you raise your frequency. So remember to keep your eyes on the prize. My name is Wendy, and you've been called out of darkness.